It's uncompromising, addictive, and often unforgiving with an adrenaline rush like no other. There is no practice, no second chances. It's the ultimate motorsport competition on gravel. It is rally, and this is the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship, coming to you from Scouts Rally SA. One of the big differences to this year's Scouts Rally South Australia is the change of date. It's moved from a traditional home in the middle of the season where we've had very wet and wintry conditions. Now this year, bright sunshine and the driest, dustiest Rally South Australia I can remember. What will that mean for our teams? Well, I think loose, slippery roads for the first time and as we do our first pass over the stage, it could make a real difference. And with Classics, the only championship being decided, it means we've got four-wheel drive and outright, which will be decided in this final round of the year. What's the motto? Be prepared! Be prepared for a big finish to our season. Both titles are still alive, but the Armourall STP Power Stage earlier in the event had certainly weighed in favour of the outright leader. Last round in Coffs Harbour, Eli Evans made an amazing comeback after crashing out in the power stage. Somehow, he and Glenn Weston not only held their opposition at bay, they increased their lead over Molly Taylor and Bill Hayes, who had to settle for third for the weekend. Stephen Brent McKenzie claimed second spot, ever so close to knocking Adrian Coppen off his third position in the championship. Eli Evans now leads by 31 points over Molly Taylor, but with Adrian Coppen switching from outright to four-wheel drive this weekend, Steve McKenzie's job to claim a championship podium is that much easier. Eli has his eyes on the prize. He and Glenn Weston are lining up their third title, their first for Citroen. A win in the power stage yesterday gave them five vital points and a psychological advantage leading into the main event. We're actually standing on a stage, we compete down here and we turn left, so to be in that small section, three kilometres, to be a second a K or a second and a half a K faster than the rivals is a bit of a mind edge I've got over them now. Molly Taylor and Bill Hayes are still in this fight though. They scraped into the power stage final, but could only manage one extra point in the high-tech oils Renault Clio. Steve and Brent McKenzie must finish this round to consolidate third in the championship and maintain pressure. The brothers from Bendigo missed the cut for the final by just two tenths of a second. If Citroen was issuing luck to its teams, then they successfully nested the bad luck with Tony Sullins and Julia Barkley. Their ongoing drama with gear selection has stopped them showing their true potential in the last two rounds. Once again though, the factory DS3 was in the mix in the Power Stage Final. In the Australian four-wheel drive series, Mick Patton maintains his lead over Gerald Schofield and Marcus Walkham. But this event is the best of three, and with no Schofield here this weekend, the challenge comes from Marcus Walkham. It's a bittersweet pill for the Repco Rally team. Mick and Bernie Webb have attended all rounds, won more stages than any other team, now find themselves with the door slightly ajar, waiting for the very pacey Tasmanians. Patton also missed the cut for the Armourall STP Power Stage Final, handing another chance to the Walkers. Marcus and Scott tested the rally waters in Canberra, coming away with a big bag of points and encouraging them to return to Rally Australia. The extra points on offer for the win at Coffs gave them a nose in front and provided the incentive for a final round appearance at Scouts Rally SA. Now, an extra five points from the power stage has only helped their cause. We're here to, to try and win the rally and. And if that means we might end up having a crack at a championship, then so be it. But, um, you know, we're just taking it one stage at a time and, and, and one heat at a time and, and hopefully we can come away with a win. Mark Petter might just be the man to stop the wall from March. Finally, the Petter suspension maxi car has an engine management system that engineers can work with. Gone is the system that came with the car. In its place, a well-respected Australian MoTeC computer that should allow them to understand just what this new generation rally car is really capable of. 
Speaking of capable, let's not forget Harry Bates. Like Adrian Coppin, he's jumped into a four-wheel drive this weekend in readiness for the 2016 season. His second place in the power stage has opened a few eyes. So, with the bonus points <laughs> allocated, teams prepare for the opening heat of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. And that is coming up right after the break. Welcome back to Scouts Rally SA, where the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship is about to begin. While Eli and Molly are fighting for a championship, Tony Sullins has not been able to get runs on the boards. Your speed and commitment is not showcased by your championship position. You've really come to grips with this car and I think enjoyed the last three rounds, it just hadn't quite gone your way. Yep, that's it, that's yeah. the one. I mean, I'm fighting with Simon for the wooden spoon, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm just really stoked that I've got my head around the car now. Steve McKenzie came off the back of a tremendous result at Rally Australia. Um, you must be looking forward to this one. Yeah, uh, South Australia has not uh, been one of my favourite rallies in the past, um, but I think we could uh, probably do all right this year. Um, we've got a good car, reliable, um, as we've proven in uh, Coffs. So, yeah, just pushing for a finish tomorrow, the Savo, sorry, um, so we can get that third for the championship and, and then we might have a go from there. It's nice to be back in SA and um, I think the, the rallies that start in the afternoon are always difficult because you have so many hours to sit and think, but we're just looking forward to, to getting out there. Six, being six on the road, it'll still be slippery, but for sure, we'll, at least we'll have a, a few swept lines, so we need to, uh, to maximise that advantage for sure. She's basically got to beat me on three days now, the way I see it, so um, unless we have some dramas, um, she's going to have to drive the, the, uh, the ring out of the little Renault to keep up with the Citroen, so um, I'm in the hot seat now, I think the pressure's on Molly, so um, I'm feeling relaxed, feeling good, and I can't wait to get out there. We've got four stages this afternoon, or three, and then one at night time. 50. The opening stage is 11 kilometres right, long three, and Eli target. is sweeping the roads of loose gravel. Then rocks. 300. Oops, sorry, mate. Too wide. <laughs> Slippy there. Tony Sullins has his head around the Citroen, finishing the stage 0.4 of a second in front of his teammate. But he's not happy with the car. Okay, it's a bit too cautious in the last couple of corners. I don't know why. It's really taily, the car is yeah. everywhere. Right. Yep. As she predicted, Molly Taylor takes advantage of better road position. Telephone Road is hers by two seconds. Ashley James has been distracted with things mechanical in the AJE Polo. We've had to do a rush gearbox build overnight and then just a few issues with getting it adjusted up and shifting right. And um, I'm not quite happy with how the clutch is working at the moment, but it's not really slowing me down. It's more likely to just be to do damage or wear to the gearbox. So. 106 left, keep tight. Steve McKenzie is faster than James, but five off the lead pace. Like Evans, a moment mid-stage unsettles the car. Then crest. Then crest, turn two right, two right. But his concern is the outright speed his Fiesta lacks in a straight line. That's definitely the fastest stage of the rally. Um, very long straights in the square corners. Um, so I think we're just lacking a fair bit there with the, the very top end speed. SS2 is more to his liking though. The Optico Fiesta just 0.3 behind Evans. Again though, Taylor has the stage win, this time by a second. She leads Eli by three and a half seconds for the heat. She must win this heat to keep the championship alive. Right over flat crest. Tony Sullen's concern over the car stepping out costs him time. Now it's he who's five seconds off the pace. Okay, I think I was way too tentative through some of that stuff. I was scared he it's step, back stepping out and hitting trees and things, so I just tried to keep it as neat as I could. SS3, Crawford, is the longest stage. In Scouts Rally SA, it's considered the signature forest stage and will be used four times over the weekend. The McKenzie brothers are in sync with their Fiesta and pushing the limit. Despite the moment, they set the pace and lead Eli Evans home by 0.2 of a second after nearly 21 kilometres. It's not the result Molly was hoping for. McKenzie is four seconds quicker. 
Taylor and, and Bill Hayes might have swept the road, but they are contending with dust and some unforced errors. You're right, stay there, stay there, stay there. Now back, other side of the pole. Let's just calm it down and tidy it up. She surrenders the heat lead to Eli by just one second. The final stage in heat one is the same stage again, after service and in the dark. This time, Eli will be on a swept road and his colours will likely shine. We were doing our best to come back into service leading and we almost got there, but um, I just made a, a two small errors in, in the Crawford stage and we dropped some time trying to... Had a few sort of areas where we, we used some of the, the road and a bit more and um, yeah, thankfully we got back on the road, no, no, um, no uh, drama to the car, but just a bit of time lost and a bit of a wake up call. Molly's won two stages and Steve's won one and mm. we're three stages down and I've got zero stage wins, but uh, most importantly I'm leading the rally, so 1.2 seconds up on Molly, so we've just been consistent. Um, Tackling the loose roads at the front has been very interesting. We've made a couple of mistakes along the way, so maybe if I can just get that sorted, uh, we might pinch a stage win on the next day, on the night stage. In tennis parlay, it's championship match point. 8 p.m. arrives. Start time for the decider in two-wheel drive. It's dark as expected, but there's hardly a breath of wind. Dust and dark are not a good mix. The standard two-minute gap between cars is extended. A four minute gap, yeah. there are patches of dust, it's most of it's pretty good, but there's a couple of patches, so it's better safe than sorry. Eli, his first car on the road, and his experience is better than last round at Coffs when the Citroen's lights were pointing everywhere but the road in front. You know, I think there's a second to Kane not sweeping the road, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'll bank that time and we'll, we'll look into tomorrow now. The high-tech oil's Renault is not happy. Electrical gremlins making Molly Taylor's right. task harder than it already is. She's barely three seconds quicker than her first pass. Now trails Evans by 18. I don't know what it is, but it just keeps dropping revs. We are halfway through the gear cuts and I don't know why, so... It's game over for her hopes of a fairy tale championship win. Steve McKenzie finishes just 1.6 behind Taylor, but his run could have been much better. She's tricky. Uh, I think we had some spectators running down there, just uh, coming up to an, uh, a bit of a junction. Uh, a few little uh, cat's eyes sort of trying to judge where the corner was, and uh, next thing I know, I'm already on it. So, <laughs> so we ended up doing a loop. Uh, I probably didn't lose too much time there, but um, yeah, it was, it was challenging. <laughs> Any thought Tony Sullins had that his hydraulic gear change issues were behind him, the night Short stage changed all that. Into all right, start left again. Over flat crest. No idea what stuck on me, what gear I'm stuck in now. I think it might be four. The I've had to crawl like through five. all the hairpins at slipping the clutch and trying to get keep going. It's got a high off 2008. Got no idea what that means. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got to sit here with my foot in the clutch and I've got to try and get away in fourth gear, so or fifth gear or whatever the hell it is. If Steve McKenzie had concerns about the speed of the first stage, then he'd be pleased not to be amongst the four-wheel drives. Marcus Walcom got straight to business, smashing a second a kilometre out of his opposition to lead by 11 seconds from the Repco Rally team. Leading SA Championship contender Guy Tyler was hot on his heels, though, with Mark Petter and Harry Bates, fourth equal, only a second off. Bates Jr. hit back very next stage, though, to win by 0.2. No doubt the 08 Corolla is a competitive car, but consider this, Harry's sixth ever rally and his first time in a four-wheel drive. Mark Petter also turned the tables, bookending the Walkhams, finally able to start setting up his car. It's still not handling the way I like it to, but the thing's going and, and not missing, so, you know, we can start, you know, really start where we should have been in Canberra. If Pedder was getting on track, then Stephen Mee was getting off track. But it didn't slow him much, and he still beat two of the tail-enders to the finish of Gum Flats. Bates couldn't repeat the win through the long Crawford stage, but to his credit, he banked the second fastest time despite losing his brakes in the final 5Ks, proving his win in the previous stage was no fluke. 
The Tregonia Seafoods Mitsubishi sibling pairing proved too quick. Pedda and Patton forced back into third and fourth respectively. Andrew Penny bought reinforcements from Mount Kosciuszko, a second Subaru in the hands of Chris Higgs, with Penny's daughter, Kira, pointing the way. It didn't end the way they'd hoped, a blown engine before the end of heat one. Adrian Coppin had switched from two to four wheel drive for this event. With the prospect of an expanded championship in 2016, he was behind the wheel of an ex Neil Bates championship Corolla. Issues with the steering rack didn't inspire confidence in Coppin and he shelved his plans early. The long repeat stage was a challenge for Harry Bates. First time rallying under lights. That was when the spots were working. It did suit the Repco team though. Crawford still might have fallen in favour of the Walkhams, but this time Mick Patton was second and he was excited. Let's just drive rallies at night. Really? Oh, that was absolutely fantastic. That's the first time I've driven in anger at night. I uh, did a, a zero job down the bay once. But, oh, that is unreal. That is absolutely unreal. That, that is just where it's at right there. I get a real buzz out of committing to the notes. Uh, it's something that we work on uh, a hell of a lot and just over crests and over brows and listening to distances and just chipping it in and yeah stuff like that and uh, Bernie was just telling me we were 11 seconds quicker than Eli with dust so uh, I'll take that one. And we'll take one too, a break that is, back in a moment. East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship coming to you from Scouts Rally SA. Regular campaigner Jeff David and his Porsche 911 have not featured this season, but he and Grant Geelan are back at Scouts Rally SA on an important mission. It's not just about going fast. Uh, we're really here just to test, uh, so we're just using it as a shakedown for the Alpine Rally, which is the big classic event at the end of the year in November where there'll be 130 cars and we're the defending champions, so uh, we want to make sure that the car's right for that. And the roads here will be perfect because they're very fast and flowing, very similar to Alpine. A second pass on gun flat opens the second heat, and our newly crowned champions are not as tidy as they'd like. You know, Glenn said he got off, he was a bit slow in the notes in sections, and I said, oh, I didn't drive a few lines, I drove a few lines the way I didn't want to drive a few lines, so. It was a good wake-up call. I think we're both awake now, so <laughs> we're ready for the next stage. Steve McKenzie is happy with his sprint over the 6Ks, one second behind Eli and in front of Molly to start the second heat. I happy with that. I didn't think there was much left in there, so everyone's obviously having a go. So <laughs> that was probably the stage, I think, that suited our car the most. Um, it was maybe a little bit too tight um, with us being a bit wider than everyone else. Um, but other than that, I couldn't go much quicker then. Tony Sullins is back this morning. The hydraulics, no issue through gun flats. They start the long Crawford stage with high hopes. All right, well, let's see if we can get through here in one piece. With, with, all, with all gears, yeah. To the halfway point on split times, Sullins is one okay. second quicker than Eli Evans. They've got no gears again. Like 10 like kilometres into that 20 something kilometre stage. Back. Coming down the hill to the exactly the same corner, I thought, oh, come up, hydraulic pressure low, and I thought, oh, no, here we go again. The biggest problem now is we're in fourth gear in corners, you should be in third or second, and you start running out of road, and you've got nothing to help you out of trouble, and I'm just worried about these next stages. You know, there's big trees on the side of the road. It could be really, really hurtful if you uh, get caught out. Mackenzie is point one of a second in front of Holland Taylor, and importantly, still second for the heat. Although concerns over the Renault dropping power exiting corners is a worry. We tried some new things, we tried a bit of a different tyre combination. Didn't work on the first stage. I think on the second stage it was, it was probably better. We, we've still got that missing issue uh, with the engine, like mid revs. So uh, being the mechanic that I am, I've got no idea what to do about that. So uh, that's Molly's department and the boys. Um, but yeah, not too bad. Look, we're close. It's still there and we're looking forward to the Shire Roads this afternoon. Ashley James is not making an impression on the leaders, but he's got his VW Polo handling better and starting to enjoy his rally. We've had problems getting it to turn right up until now and then yesterday it was way too taily and um, it was pretty spectacular. We've got some great photos and things, but it's not necessarily fast. Like, it's still really good fun though. <laughs> 
No Sullens for SS7, buddies. Turns out all the new electric pumps they've been fitting have all been burned out by a blocked filter in a non-serviceable part. Sullen's season is over. I would have been more disappointed if we had gone home yesterday, because at least this morning in those Crawford stages, I was. I'd, I'd love to see the splits up until when the car stopped, because I, I was quite confident and fast and the car was good. Um, so, yeah, got to take positives where you can. The war between Mackenzie and Taylor rolls in favour of the fairer sex. Molly up by 0.3 of a second after nine kilometres. SS8 is more of a problem for Mackenzie. His rhythm with the car is not there. Left opens to seven. But then, some moments of brilliance, weaving through the big gums of Corriton Park. Eight right, keep tight. Right, keep tight into crest. Still, he surrenders the heat battle for second to Molly. Oh, that was a bit iffy. The struggle through there. Things are a touch iffy for Evans 2 through special stage 9. Trial Hill is a reversed section of last year's Tweedon stage, and the lead Citroen is caught. Oh well. Taylor is tidy though and bags a stage win by three seconds. Once again, point three in front of Mackenzie. Harry Bates dominated the morning stages of Heat 2, winning gum flat from Marcus Walkham. The wide open, fast stretches of Crawford would always fall in favour of the unrestricted machines. Marcus Walkham accounted for himself well, but still only seven in front of Bates. In a demonstration of committed driving over blind crests, Mick Patton was third in the unrestricted Repco Mitsubishi. Mark Pedder was off the pace with no brakes, and a brake was just what he was looking for. No, we're still not chasing our tails, but back where we were, well, where we should have been in Canberra. Something worked in service. He and Moskett were beaten into second through the single run over Buddies by Harry Bates, but only by 0.6 of a second. Next stage, Corriton Park, Pedder was second again, this time to Walkham by 0.4 but it could and should have been Harry Bates' stage. Four right. 40. Okay, forget about it. Yep. Next call, slight right on crest 50. Walcombe won the trial hill stage as well, again from Mark Petter, although this time the margin was over a second. The kid from Canberra was still no, third right and not frightened to have a go in 50. terrain that is revered by the very best. Go, 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 go. OK, settle down. Yep. Dip OK, 55 right minus. Imagine you're a 12-year-old, your father's an Australian champion and you're hoping one day in a decade or so you might have the same opportunities. Well, fast forward that 10 years and I've got just the fella, Harry Bates. This is the championship winning car, and it's your first foray into four wheel drive in the Australian Championship. Yeah, in 2008, we went up to Coffs Harbour to spectate it at uh, the rally where Dad won his last Australian Rally Championship to date. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it was uh, obviously cool to see a car that had been developed in the workshop over the years and, and that sort of thing. And for years now, I've been sitting in the garage making car noises and pulling the sequential gearbox, but had never driven it before a couple of weeks ago, and now here I am doing an ARC in it, so it's all a bit surreal. Well, we saw you get on the podium almost your first ARC rally, I think it was your first ARC rally, in a front-wheel drive car, front-wheel drive Corolla, and you're cutting your teeth, but I think you've been impressive enough that Dad's flicked you to the keys of this thing early, and you've done a great job. Yeah, I mean, um, the principles are the same from a four-wheel drive to a front-wheel drive, I suppose. The, the entry of the corner is the same, it's just that on the exit there's more traction and more power available with this thing, so, uh, you know, it's been a really big learning experience for me and one that I've really enjoyed. Because I forget myself, I mean, I've seen you around the event so much and I know you've been cutting your teeth doing some driving and things, but like an event like this has some iconic oh, stages, yeah. almost scary stages to that effect, yeah, and you're no, doing them for the first time. Must be pretty intimidating. Yeah, it was probably the only con of coming to this rally as, as the first one to do in this car. We always wanted to treat it as a test event and, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time on the limiter doing 180k an hour, which is... Which is 
a bit intimidating, particularly on the stages. Um, but, you know, it's uh, we have treated it as a test and we've spent a lot of the time driving around at 9 tenths trying to, trying to make it to the finish and we've set some decent stage times along the way, so happy days. Yeah, and happy days you say. Not happy days for mum and dad. How are they coping? Because I think he was pretty average when you were in a front-wheel drive car, but now you're one of these. Yeah. What do you think? What, how has his reaction been? He's been very quiet the last couple of weeks. <laughs> the advice has been on the, you know, sort of only few and far between, and I think that's mainly because he knows that his advice would be to slow down. That's probably not going to happen, but <laughs> Mum's quite well trained. She's had 25 years of practice now with Dad, so... Well, it looks like you've had the training done as well, mate. Maybe another Bates champion in the future, and a great job and great to have you in this series, mate. Cheers, thank you. Stay with us for the rest of Heat 2, coming to you from Scouts Rally SA, right after the break. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship being held at Scouts Rally SA. Steve McKenzie only has one thing on his mind starting Chroma, to get Molly. Trailing the high-tech oils Renault by eight seconds, he does win the stage for Molly, but only by 0.7. It felt reasonably quick. Eli Evans is happy with the Citroen's handling. Remember, he and Glenn Weston are car one on the road, and that means sweeping the surface of loose gravel. Two seconds off the lead pace after seven kilometres is a good effort. Hardly surprising then, they win through the repeat run of Telephone Road. The Opticote Fiesta leads the high-tech oils Renault by four, and McKenzie's battle with Taylor is down to just three seconds for the heat. A new stage in 2015, Waterholes has been slated as very fast. It's new to every driver, so past experience counts for nothing. Interestingly, Eli Evans is quickest, even as first car on the road. Molly Taylor is just two seconds behind, but clawing three back from Stephen McKenzie. And this, despite the engine still momentarily cutting out when she changes between second and third. The stage suits Ashley James, just 0.1 behind the Optico Fiesta. QH1 is McKenzie's stage from Evans, with Taylor two seconds further adrift. Their battle for second is down to less than three before the Gawler special stages, and tyres are a critical factor in that strategy. One of the great things about the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship is the diversity of our rallies. We almost have a mini WRC as we travel the country. Perth versus Queensland. Here in South Australia, very different road types, which challenges our drivers, particularly with our Kumo control tyre. In this event in the past, particularly the last 10 years that I can think of, we've had very wet, muddy conditions. The teams have even dealt with fog. Here the sun is out, the temperatures are up, so our teams have to manage tyres, and the data they've had from previous years is not really relevant. The Kenzie brothers here just finishing a forest stage over my shoulder. They don't have service, so they've got to do all the work themselves with the tool, tools in the car. They're effectively swapping the front to the back. The front, drive, front wheel drive car here wearing out the front tyres more, the rear tyres in better condition. So we can see more wear on the rear here. They're putting the good drive tyres to the front. They've got three super stages to do tonight. And then obviously they're trying to get more drive and traction as they hold a lead over Molly Taylor, which is very slim at the moment. That slim lead is blown out at the Gawler Super Special stages. The engine cutting out in the Renault becomes the secondary issue. Broken suspension in the previous stage is thwarting Molly Taylor's efforts to make the end of the heat. She and Bill Hayes bleed three seconds on the first pass and a massive 10 on the final stage of the heat. A big smile finally though from Ashley James who matches Eli for fastest time on the Super Special to round out the day. Look, I'm enjoying driving the car today, yeah, definitely, or well, this event, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a fun car to drive, we just need to take it away now and actually get it sorted out so that, you know, it's on the pace. Bates versus Walcom. And heat two of the four-wheel drive national series was being fought out between two relatively new combatants. All the while, the man trailing them both, Nick Patton, was struggling to come to terms with the fact his series lead was being eroded away. Mark Petter didn't help either. His improving times were often getting between Walcom and Patton. 
Bates too was consistently being a thorn in the Repco side. Young Harry second for the Heat and holding pattern at bay despite the Repco team coming home second in SS11, Telephone Road. No thorn in the side of the Wulgulga Subway Subi, but nearly an emu or two in a hold the phone moment through SS11. We've had everything, 150. Care nine left long and turn two right play. The short ball of super special stages would hardly influence the day's top result. At just 1.5 kilometres each, there's no room to make up time. For Andrew Penny, the result did influence his rally, blowing an unbreakable clutch that ended his season early. Gun something. Four right. Harry Bates finished the last stage as he started the heat on the top step with Mick Patton hard on his heels. There was nothing the Repco pilot could do but watch as the Walcombe brothers walked off with valuable points for a second heat victory and mathematically wrapping up the four-wheel drive national series by a single point with the heat in hand. Just one more day of competition remains for the 2015 season in the East Coast Bull Bars ARC. All that coming up right after the break. The final day of the final round of a brilliant season in the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. This <laughs> is the decider at Scouts Rally SA. But with the title wrapped up last night, it's all done and dusted. Except the personal battle Stephen McKenzie has with Molly Taylor. And a spot of testing for our outright champions for 2015. The boys, I made them, made them work last night. I said, OK, let's um, put some new springs in and let's change some shock settings. And now's a great time to do some more testing. So, you know, if we're going to run a Citroen again next year, then what better time now than when we've got about 70 competitive kilometres to keep learning, so mm -hmm. you never stop learning and rallying. Clearly, Eli Evans is learning. He smashes another 10 seconds off his previous best for Crawford. That's half a second a kilometre. So we've got a new day, a fresh day. We've still got a good fight with Mackenzie yep. um, for today, so that, that's our focus. Molly is focused, and she improves her time too. Not as much as Evans, but still a great performance in dusty conditions. Oh, how'd you miss that? 80. Talent. Her quick wits matching her pace. Um, I guess we're going to be fighting with both Molly um, for a, a second place podium today, um, but we'd like to challenge Eli for the heat win as well, so uh, we'll be pushing from uh, this first stage. Um, so hopefully, I reckon we can uh, get Eli if we uh, do take a few more risks than we have been. Um, over the last couple of days, so um, yeah, fingers crossed we can keep the car um, in one piece. Um, so yeah, we'll be driving quite hard. Care eight right over crest into care dip. True to his word, jump, he drives the Opticote Fiesta jump, hard, taking right time wherever crest. he can. Six right over crest. Oh, 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 shit, that's yeah, something what happened. Something then. busted. We were having a real crack on that stage. Jeez. I reckon we were at least 10 seconds up on our uh, previous run through. So uh, we would have been on the money, but uh, on a cut earlier in the stage, I think I hit something and slightly bent something in the front ends. And then now coming up over the jump, just down the road there, once we've landed the wheels, uh, broken something, then folded back and uh, ripped the wheel off eventually. So <laughs> here we are parked here. It's a season ender for McKenzie, who started 2015 as the dark horse after a couple of years preparation in the earlier model Fiesta. The brothers from Bendigo won't beat Eli on the weekend podium or Molly for the heat, but their championship third is still secure. You'd have never known the four-wheel drive national series was wrapped up. Walcombe and Patton fired out of the morning blocks. At the end of 20 kilometres, only five seconds separated the fastest two cars. Walcombe with the advantage. 120. Four used tyres might have cost Harry Bates a better Six position. The, the Kumos went off and toward the end. Up. Keep it neat. Ooh. Mark Petter had a blinder to start the day. 250. But a spin and then blinding dust slowed the prospect of a stage win. Straight through, straight through there. Under Where? the tree, under the tree. Go. Yep. 
state championship leader Guy Tyler also slumped to last in stage after the intercooler pipe blew off and the car lost hey, vital boost. Oh, what? Chris Higgs rejoined after 24 hours finding and rebuilding an engine to get back in the game. But it was the consistency of the older model Evo 3 that saw Scott Schubert leading the back markers for the remainder of the day. Tyler bounced back for the third pass over Telephone Road, nearly three seconds clear of Mick Patton, who kept his nose in front of Walcombe for the next three stages. But it was the South Australian who won all three. By the end of Special Stage 20, QH2, Harry Bates had made enough impression on the leaders to take the lead in Heat 3. With that lead in mind, Bates thought wisely for a young head and consolidated his heat lead with a fast but conservative drive through goalfields. The result was second to Guy Tyler, who was on a mission, hunting down his fourth consecutive stage win. In one of his favourite stages in the championship, Mark Pedder was third. Pedder is less concerned about the loss to his competitors as to the bet he had with brother Scott about being able to beat his fastest time on the stage from last year. At stake, a respectable bottle of 96 bin 389. No wonder he was peeved. By the super special stages at Gawler, Bates and Walcombe would share a win apiece to retain the heat and rally victory, respectively. Despite making the podium of every event this season, including two wins, the Repco Rally team found themselves on the wrong side of the rules that allowed the best three finishers from the season to count. A moot point that allowed the very quick Walcombs from Tasmania to get up and snatch the prize. So, Mick Patton and Bernie Webb must settle for second in what has been a stellar season for them in their return to four-wheel drive. Gerald Schofield is third after a bumper crop of points gathered at Rally Australia. Mark Petter is fourth, with Justin Dow fifth. Still to come, the final stages of the outright contenders in the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship, and that's coming up in just a few moments. Back to the Scouts Rally SA. The outright championship contenders have been falling like flies. Tony Sullins is out with hydraulic issues, and Steve McKenzie is retrieving the Optico Fiesta from the long Crawford stage. Even Jeff David is now out. He's testing for the upcoming Alpine Rally in November, sideline mid stage in Crawford after the rear control arm on the Porsche 911 snaps in half. Long three left, out of gear. What happened there? Broken something. Broken something. For the rest, it's business as usual. And as usual, Eli's leading the way. The third and final pass on Telephone Road. Nothing earth-shattering from the championship winning Citroen, but still enough to win by six seconds from Molly Taylor. If their missing issues weren't enough, the high-tech oil's Renault has now lost its clutch. And short three right plus. Is flat left cut. Her slow start means the door is open for Ashley James, and he beats Molly home over the 5Ks to record a time of 3.29, two quicker than the Renault. It's a mirror finish through the next short QH stage. On the Shire roads of Goldfields, things change. The local council had recently graded the road, and as first car on it, Eli and Glenn are sweeping the surface of loose gravel. One, go. Even with the clutch issue and having to use the 100. starter button to get going, Molly and Bill have the advantage of the road being cleared of loose gravel by other cars. Despite their own concerns about the surface, they beat the Citroen home by nearly four seconds. Ooh, struggled in there. Two short, sharp bursts around the Gawler Super Special. Another stage win to Ashley James, and the championship is wrapped up for another year. Eli Evans and Glenn Weston winning every heat this weekend, a bonus to their third championship title. Winning today was just icing on the cake, really. Championship yesterday, and the win today, I really wanted it. I wanted a clean sweep, and we managed to do it. So, um, 
We couldn't be happier right now. Still can't believe it. 12 in a row and then, you know, another six uh, over the last um, year and a bit. It's been awesome. So, yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Fantastic also that the Gawler top ten, the shootout to establish just who is the fastest on the track, is dominated by a couple of young guns. Guy Tyler, winner of the South Australian Championship today, is second fastest in the top ten. But the winner is our ARC rookie for 2015, Harry Bates. It's appropriate that we have last year's winner of the Gawler Top 10 to announce the STP standout for Scouts Rally SA. You may remember last Rally Rally Australia we gave the STP standout award to Guy Tyler. This rally there's been plenty of standouts, I think Guy's won a few stages, Marcus Walkham has won the national series, but the STP standout award has to go to Harry Bates. This is his first heat win, first drive in a full wheel drive car and here he is already on the podium, what a fantastic result. The Kumo Spirit of the Rally Award is fitting as well. They've competed all season, won rallies and finished on the podium at every round, only to fall short to regulations designed to encourage more competitors to become involved. Mick Patton, Bernie Webb and the Repco Rally team certainly the most deserving of the Kumo Spirit of the Rally Award for this final round of the season. The season looks like this. Eli Evans and Glenn Weston win their third championship. A great fight from Molly Taylor and Bill Hayes all year sees them finally settle for second. Steve McKenzie will be thankful Adrian Coffin changed to four-wheel drive this weekend. He and brother Brent hold on for third. Another chapter in the Australian Rally Championship closes. For three years, the main game has been two-wheel drive. But in the last 12 months, with the evolution of the specially designed and built Proto and Maxi cars, we look set to see an outright championship in 2016 that will be both four and two wheel drive, as well as a standalone two wheel drive championship. We look forward to bringing you all that action next year, but for now, keep up with everything in the world of rally at the website rally.com.au. Thanks for being a part of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship this season. I'm Greg Rust. We'll catch you in the new year for the first round in Western Australia with Forest Rally. Bye for now. Today's coverage is made possible by Kumo Tire, Petter Suspension, Armour, STP, Co Tire. Can Am, Polaris, and our supporting partner, East Coast Bull Bars, world's best alloy bull bars.